All right, folks, today I'm going to be showing you how I made the anti-material rifle from Fallout New Vegas, which is this thing from this game. And my version of it came out to be this right here. And fun fact for you, in case you were wondering why it's spelled like that, you know, with an E instead of an A in the word material, it's because in the game, this thing is modeled after the PGM Hegate 2. And forgive me if I mispronounce that, I can't pronounce anything, but that is a French design. And that's why it's spelled like that in the game. Now, when it came to actually building this thing, the first part I worked on was the handle right here. And this was actually a first attempt. I had to redo it and also the stock right here, but I'll get to that in a bit. And by the way, all the definitions of the vaguer words are going to be in the video description, just in case you do not know them. So for the first attempt on the handle, I just glued a couple of pieces of 10 millimeter foam and cut it to shape using the bandsaw. And then with the Dremel, I added some small bevels. As for the stock, it was also two pieces of 10 millimeter foam glued together. Now at this point, I also added a bit to the receiver and I also added the barrel, which I will talk about here in a moment. But after adding the bulk of the receiver and the barrel, I noticed that the handle was extremely flimsy and I didn't like that. I wasn't comfortable with it. So I decided to redo it at that point. So I basically dismantled the entire thing and started over. Now for the second attempt, I copied the pattern of the stock and the handle to a sheet of cardstock paper so I can get an idea of what the metal rod needs to look like. I allow the internal support to include the handle and go further down the receiver. Definitely way better than it was the first time. So now onto the receiver itself. The receiver was basically divided into two halves, the top and the bottom. The bottom half, which you see right here, is 40 millimeters thick or four layers of 10 millimeter foam. I of course had to cut out a socket for it for that metal rod to go in, but once glued, that was pretty much it. It's that simple. It was just basically a rectangular prism. Now, of course, there is some other parts beneath the receiver like the trigger and the magazine, but I'll get to those in a minute. For now, let me show you how I made the barrel. I took a two and a half centimeter PVC pipe or one inch if you're American and cut it to length using my table saw, which I just acquired. It's a new tool of mine. It's awesome to have. This is also a good time to tell you guys how I determined the length of this thing. Like I said before, it's based on the PGM Hecate 2, and that sniper rifle is exactly 138 centimeters long. And so that's how I determined the length of my anti-material rifle. Now, going back to actually making the thing, I wrapped a portion of that PVC pipe in four millimeter foam, and you can see a pretty ugly seam here, but it's actually not really noticeable because most of that is going to be concealed by the prop itself anyway. Then, instead of wasting a bunch of perfectly good foam and carving out a sort of trench in the bottom of the receiver, I actually cut the PVC pipe in this fashion, vertically in half, more or less. But at this point, we're not done yet, not by a long shot. <laughs> Get it? Because it's a sniper rifle, so it, it shoots up long distance. Now, normally, I don't mention the flaws in my props in my videos. However, I feel like I need to point them out for this thing because I do intend to make this again in the future, and it's got some flaws on it that I don't want to repeat next time I make it. Because if I do, well, then I'll kind of just experience the fallout of my skill. Mm -hmm. I did want to make a sliding bolt, but I think I got too lazy. I don't know why I didn't do it. So with all of that done, it was time to move on to all these pieces underneath the receiver, namely the trigger and the magazine. I started with the trigger and there's an, here's another thing about my prop. It doesn't actually have a trigger in there. And I actually did that on purpose because judging by the pattern, look how small that trigger is. If I tried to make that, it would probably tear off of that pretty easily. So I just decided to not do it. And also this thing can probably fool some people into thinking that it's a real weapon. So the lack of a trigger is probably a good way to disprove that. And with that done, it was time to move on to the magazine itself. It was made of three layers of 10 millimeter foam, cut to shape using my bandsaw. And as for all those little details, that was made using two millimeter foam. And then there was also uh, this piece right here that was made using four layers of 10 millimeter foam, the same thickness as the bottom half of the receiver. And then once that all was done, I glued the magazine to the receiver itself. Now at this point, the next thing to do was the top of the receiver. It was all just one piece of 10 millimeter foam and it was wrapped on that PVC pipe. At this point, we're actually almost done with the construction. All that was left to do at this point was the scope and the muzzle brake. For the scope, for the middle part, I used a small PVC pipe and wrapped that in four millimeter foam. But I also wanted the scope to be see-through, which it is. It might be a little tricky for you guys to see that, but it is see-through. So in order to accomplish that, I needed to make the thing hollow. I could have just made the thing solid and called it a day, but I really wanted it to be see-through. 
For it to be an actual scope though, that is actually quite complicated. You need tons of different lenses inside that scope, which is why actual scopes are so dang expensive. So no zoom effect, it's just see-through. Now there's the middle part, which is a cylinder, but then there's these two parts right here. This geometric shape is called the truncated cone, and I didn't actually know how to make those. I didn't learn it in geometry class or anything. So I did a bit of research, and it turns out to be a pretty simple yet uh, long process. Though I will probably make a video on it in the future because truncated cones are actually something I come across a lot. And then there's the short cylinders on each end of the scope. And both those pieces have a little piece of acrylic in them. The back of the scope, the one you actually look through, I was able to get away with just buying a disc of acrylic and then just gluing that in there. For the bigger one though, I actually had to make that. So I went out, bought a sheet of acrylic, and cut it into a circle. And as for the crosshairs, I had to actually make it entirely from scratch using Photoshop and the pencil tool. And then I had to go print that on clear plastic film. So I cut out the printing and then I very foolishly super glued it to the acrylic. Are you a madman? As for the muzzle brake, and it was no time to take a break at this point. <laughs> Basically all pieces of four millimeter foam that I cut to a certain shape glued together like so. But there's something about the muzzle brake. If you look closely, you'll notice that all the corners flare out a little bit. So to figure out exactly how big the pieces need to be, it's a, it's a bit much to go into, so I'm not gonna cover it. But basically I just had to use some geometry to figure out exactly how big those pieces needed to be to put the muzzle brake together so that it flares out in all the corners. But after making that, I just glued that on and added the entire muzzle brake to the end of the barrel. And at that point, the construction was complete. The primer was the same thing that I always use, which is two coats of Plasti Dip. And I apologize for the poor lighting, I filmed this at nighttime. As for the paint job, the paint job was pretty simple. It is pretty much all metal after all. And for the metal parts, I just gave it one coat of metallic silver and put a bunch of highlights on it just to make the edges pop out more and also give the illusion that the top part of the receiver is geometric, even though it really isn't. It's just, it's really curvy. And then there's two wooden parts, namely the handle and most of the stock. I first gave it one uniform coat of light brown as a kind of base or foundation, and then I kind of added another coat of dark brown, but I didn't give it a uniform coat. I kind of uh, diffused it on there to kind of give it some color variation, so to speak. And the wooden parts also have highlights. I added those using light brown. And the very last thing to do was the sealant. I usually don't do this because sealant usually kind of ruins the metallic finish that my paint gives. However, I did need to apply it on the wooden parts because when you apply a uniform coat of something in a, with acrylic paint, that is, because like say, for example, on, on the handle, when you're holding it and well, bleh, handling it, <laughs> the paint can chip off and reveal the primer and you don't want that. So for the sealant, I just put on two coats of matte Mod Podge. And now the very, very last thing to do at this point was to give it a bit of weathering. I took my Copic marker airbrush and loaded it with the dark brown marker. And then just kind of haphazardly sprayed that all over the thing. But I made sure that I got in the grooves and stuff, especially. And that definitely dirtied it up and made it look weathered and like it had seen a lot of action. And I'm quite pleased with the paint job because <laughs> before applying that, it just looked kind of boring and well, kind of pristine, I guess. Like it didn't really belong in a post-apocalyptic world that is Fallout. And we're done. That's the anti-material rifle. So while yes, I'm kind of happy with it, I'm also not. I, I, I would like to do it again and make it a lot cooler. But it was definitely fun, and this was actually the first uh, gun at this scale that I've ever made. I have made a few guns before, but they were all pistol sized, like Mercy's gun and the uh, McCree's gun too. I, I don't have any footage of the McCree gun. That was actually the first prop I ever made, so it's it's bad. But yeah, uh, I think that's gonna do it for this one, guys. If you would like me to make one of these for you, there is a link in the description that will take you to my Etsy shop. You can just go ahead and place an order or contact me and we'll go from there. If you have any suggestions whatsoever on either something to make in the future or how to make my videos better, the best place to do that is in the comment section. And hey, more subscriptions are always nice, but that's up to you guys. Thank you so much once again for watching my video, and I'll see y'all in the next build.